And are you refreshed? Yes. Good. Now what? It's supposed to be getting fewer and fewer and fewer. <laughs> that isn't how it works, is it? Okay, so I have this in my mind and in my heart. I have this dream relationship. And it's really, really, really amazing. Good. Enjoy it. <laughs> I do, I try. <laughs> it's like really amazing. And I have this like song that I found and it sort of represents it. Like yeah. when I listen, I feel it and yeah. I can like go there. Yeah. And so I go there and it's really amazing and it's really abstract and it's really emotional. All right, so then change the subject. In other words, yeah. go there, feel that, enjoy that and then don't mess it up by overthinking it and by noticing where you stand in reality relationship to it. And so before long, you own that so completely that mm -hmm. is your vibration so singularly that then circumstances and events begin to unfold that brings it into full fruition. Okay. Next. <laughs> Do you want me to leave? <laughs> well, we just want you to realize that leaving a subject in a really good feeling place is a really good thing to do. In other words, as you take pleasure from an idea and then you go do other things and then you take pleasure from an idea and then you go do other things and then you take pleasure from an idea and then you go do other things. The momentum of that doesn't get compromised with resistant thought, but when you take pleasure from it and then you try to milk the condition out of it before you're ready to allow that, then you almost always introduce resistance and then you leave it every time you visit it in a less pure place than is necessary. So we were just thinking that that understanding and that demonstration might be the very best thing in the world because there's a tendency to take the things that you really care about and think about them from your perspective of them not quite yet coming to fruition and then leaving them in a less probable place of happening anytime soon than if you just thought about it less. I get that and I feel that because I feel my inner being go like, okay, I'll get the momentum will build and build and build. And then it'll be like, go for a walk or, you know, do something totally different. Exactly what you said. Perfect. And so I really want to ask you a question, but um, I don't want to do the thing that you just said not to do. <laughs> <laughs> then we wouldn't. Okay. <laughs> then we wouldn't because that is such an important thing to understand, isn't it? That's it everything. Is. It is. That's everything is the only thing different than what you've been doing. Because so many people, life causes them to dream a dream and they do catch glimpses of it. But usually the current reality is more dominant in their vibration than the dream they've dreamed. So how can you make the dream that you're dreaming more dominant in your vibrational airtime mm -hmm. by dreaming it and then being sensitive, you know, when you go too far, don't you? Someone the other day brought a sort of rampage list. And as he began it, it was delightful and delicious. And everyone in the audience felt it build and build and build and build. And then he just couldn't leave well enough alone. <laughs> he kept going for it and going for it and going for it <laughs> and going for it until it didn't feel as good as it did at an earlier point. It's sort of like, you know, those movies, you go to the movie, they introduce you to these lovely characters. They're so beautiful. The script has them fall in love. You feel the music It's getting better and better and better and better. And they are in love. Now leave the theater. <laughs> Before she gets her head chopped off. <laughs> you know what we're talking about recognize when you're in that place because your vibration is where you last left it. Ooh, your vibration is where you last left it. So leave it feeling good and it'll pick up something like it and build it more. Leave it when it's feeling good. Don't wrestle to the ground and kill it with practicality. Okay. Good enough. <laughs> yes. Oh, <geez. laughs>
You're very brave and strong. She doesn't want to go. She wants to talk about it. This is important. Always remember her. She's leading you to something very important and powerful on the aisle. Finally, we meet <laughs> again and again and again, and we're here. Nice cover. Yes. <laughs> you started by talking about going. Don't just stay in the place that's, that you've outgrown or doesn't seem to be working right. Be selfish enough. Yeah. to gravitate toward what feels good to you. Do you think that your ability to sift through life experience and discriminate is a valuable thing? Yes. And once you've identified preferences, don't you think that it would be a good idea for you to provide for yourself as many of those good feeling preferences as possible? Oh yes. So why put up with stuff that doesn't feel so good and use the stuff that doesn't feel so good as a means of practicing a vibration that won't serve you? Totally. Yeah. 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 And, and that's what got me on the Alaska cruise, which got me here, which was all saying, you know, that little bit of money I had saved that was kind of a sense of security. I realized wasn't as valuable as a cruise that would give me a new vibrational stance, a new way of looking at myself and my potential and, and the life that I could live. Well, you want to always keep that in balance. What causes you to feel better is always to your advantage. But let's say the idea of something feels good, but the money really isn't there. And so you borrow it or scrounge it or take it from someplace else. And then you feel uncomfortable about that, but you do it anyway. Not such a good idea it's keeping yourself in the best yeah. feeling place that you can. Yes. Sure. So yes. it's not about the action. It's yeah. about whatever you can do in order to bring yourself to the best feeling place that then inspires the action. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. now what? So now what? So, so what's next? You said it's about doing 40% less action. Um, so I do. So if what's next is about doing less action, then let's say, that instead of talking about what we're not going to do, let's talk about what we are going to do, which is more contemplation, more gentle focus, more general focus, more tuning of vibration, more tuning into source, more recognizing of vibration, more sensitivity to emotion, more deliberate producing of positive emotion, more momentum building of positive emotion, more unconditional experience more basking less less thinking more awareness less action mm -hmm. more intentional fun more intending to just be and from that will come other things but this isn't going to lead you to less action this is going to lead you to more pleasing action this is going to lead you to more positive rendezvous. This is going to lead you to more productive contemplation. This is going to lead you to better ideas to better serve you in terms of your action. This is going to cause you to trim off your timeline. This is going to cause you to close the gap and speed your journey toward more of the things that you want. This is going to bring more interesting people into your life. This isn't a conversation about less action. This is a conversation about a little different perspective which causes less resistance and less resistance doesn't cause less action it causes less action that doesn't feel good you may find yourself more active than you've ever been in your life and feeling more vitality because there won't be as much resistance that is the only thing that slows you down and makes you tired clarifying yes what else we used so, to tease you and say you're human beings, not human doings, but we don't want you to think that we don't want you to do because doing is really, really fun, but doing in alignment with source is blissful doing and doing in order to compensate for not being in alignment with source is miserable. So we're just wanting to help you to get your priorities straight. So what does that mean? How does that play out? What's the practical method of that? What does that mean? What do you do in a day? What are you planning to do differently as a result of hearing this conversation? Well, one of the things that I have done differently because of hearing this conversation is rather than trying to get a job to pay the bills, I really attracted a job that I really love to do. That's a lot of fun working with airplanes. 
been a pilot since I was 17, but got out of it for a while. And rather than work in a job in an office that made me a lot of money, I decided to follow uh, impulse to be around airplanes, which always excited me, which always. So now clean that up a little bit and acknowledge that one doesn't take the possibility of the other way. In other words, if you put working a job and making a lot of money in one pile and doing what you love in another pile, what did you just do with all the money? Yeah. I took it away. Yeah, yeah. You left it over there in the hard working sacrificial pile. So contemplate that differently. Tell that story in a prettier way. Does anybody ever do what they love to do and make a lot of money? We want you to know that the people that make the most money are the people that are doing the most of what they love to do. Yeah. Because yeah. if you're loving it, you're open to source and all of those possibilities are streaming to you. You've got great timing, great inspiration, great ideas always come from that. And so don't put money outside of the pile of doing what you want to do. Yeah. Put it in the same pile. I work with executive aircraft. So I'm around people who own their own 20, 30, 40, 50, $60 million airplanes that they fly all over the world all the time. All right. Now, so say that in a way that's less resentful. <laughs> I get to pick which airplanes I like the best. So, but yeah. those people, no, those no. entitled people mm. now we're teasing you, but yeah. there is a vibration in there. In other words, I get to work in people. So is this your point of attraction or not? Are these magnificent airplanes, your point of attraction? Are these magnificent airplanes, the point of attraction of the people who own them? Are these magnificent airplanes, the attraction of the people who fly them? I'm getting close to being able to fly them as well, a pilot. What we're getting at yeah. is your association yeah. with them. Is that your point of attraction? Do you give yourself any credit for that? Yeah. Stop differentiating the ownership of it mm. and start talking about the vibrational credibility, the vibrational currency. Law of attraction has brought you there too. Mm. own that, right. own that. And as you play that separation that you just fashioned for us down a little bit, because you didn't mean to present that vibration to us. You just couldn't help it because it is there. You see what we're mm -hmm. getting at? Yeah. So give yourself credit for your point of attraction. Do you? I do.